Sanjit, it's my pleasure and privilege to be speaking to Srikant Velamakani of uh, Fractal. Thank you so much, Srikant, for taking time out. Uh, there could not be a more pertinent time to have this chat with you. We're seeing uh, AI being sort of leveraged as a soft power tool increasingly by world leaders. Uh, India is set to host uh, the AI Action Summit later this year. Uh, OpenAI's uh, Sam Altman was in Delhi just last month. You were there at the meeting as well. Uh, Shrikant, talk to us a bit about this global sort of landscape that's evolving very quickly and what role AI plays in it and also what is India's role now in the global landscape? See, AI is one of the most game-changing general purpose technologies out there. It's on the same scale as internet, mobile, cloud, but only much bigger. And it's probably bigger than all of the three things combined. And because it's general purpose, it means that it can be used across a wide range of applications in defense, in civilian uses, and a number of other places. And because it's such a powerful technology, it also has impact on how industries will be shaped, jobs will be shaped. And therefore, whoever has control over this technology and the advances in this technology has higher bargaining power, soft power in the world. So you can see that people want to be ahead. And the Deep Seek revolution that happened just a month ago, and right, when Deep Seek was launched, before that, the prevailing notion was that AI models are very expensive to build. Not every country can afford to build them. And you know what? People are so ahead of the race that don't compete with us. But what it, do, what it has done is two things. Number one, it has told us that the AI revolution is just getting started. We're in the first chapter of this book, not the final chapter of this book. There's a lot to do. And number two, that it's not that expensive. A country like India with 1.4 billion people absolutely must compete in this, in this race. So that's why you're seeing an increasing attention towards India, the increasing attention globally towards who and how should AI models be built. And, and the excitement therein as well. Right. Uh, Shrikant, uh, you spoke about how uh, the cost of AI, uh, the cost of deploying AI is also going down. Uh, the government, the Indian government in its mission, uh, in its India AI mission is also working towards that by providing compute capacity for, uh, for accommodations, for companies, for startups to sort of play around and basically develop that sort of sandbox for uh, Indian companies as well. Uh, what is Fractal uh, looking at uh, with respect to the India AI mission? There's multiple pillars there. Uh, there's the ethical pillar, there's a compute capacity uh, pillar, there's an application layer. Uh, what sort of involvement do you have with the India AI mission? I've been very fortunate to be a part of NASCOM as a NASCOM vice chair as well as Fractal, we've had the opportunity to weigh in and support the India AI mission right from its inception, right from its conceptualization. So it's been, it's been a great experience. Uh, I think that the big shift today, post Deep Seek, is about building foundation models for India. And an Indian foundation model, not just restricted to Indian languages, but a foundation model that progresses us towards AGI. So if there's a way in which Fractal can contribute to that, absolutely we would love to explore that. Apart from that, there are other elements of the mission like, uh, like hardware capacity, building all those GPU capacity, some 7,000 crores being spent on that, then investing in AI use cases or it contributing to research in various universities towards greater AI. Certainly, as Fractal, we can contribute to some of these. And also as NASCOM, I think we have a good opportunity to be able to play an important role in how this mission achieves its objectives. Right. Uh, Shrikant, uh, now with AI coming in, uh, India was sort of uh, the, became the back office of the world when the IT wave came in. Uh, now we're seeing a bunch of GCCs being set up. That's the next big word, uh, buzzword that's coming in, is that every global big tech company now wants to do GCCs in India. Uh, how does India not limit itself to becoming a back office for AI? What do we have to do here? How do we change that mentality that, okay, India is only for cheap talent? How do we change that? So GCCs are global capability centers. These are big companies thinking that India is the next place, next destination for talent. Now, this is not your old 
back back in the old days of outsourcing this is about doing the most cutting edge innovation out of india so these these gccs are a very credible very important aspect of the company's overall mission and my guess is that in the next 10 years for every major company in the world india will be the second largest destination of talent after their home country if not the greatest destination of talent so that is a power that we are talking about now coming to your question on ai and what role does india have to play on ai so you are absolutely right india already has the world's best talent in ai it's one in three ai researchers worldwide is an of indian origin so therefore india is is obviously contributing to the ai mission some of the greatest researchers i've met in ai globally have been of indian origin so what we can do differently in terms of india ai is to build these very cutting edge models which might change the game and bring us closer towards artificial general intelligence but also use ai to build cutting edge applications for india and the world now india has 1.4 billion population almost every major tech product will be ai infused so indian ai researchers can put ai to work and make the lives of 1.4 billion people better and even from a government point of view there are many many use cases that can improve the citizens experience of of the nation so these are the things that they can do as well and third thing is that indian there are multiple startups that will get created we'll have a bunch of ai entrepreneurs reimagining every business process or every problem and building companies from grounds up so you'll see at the government level at the industry level at the startup level and at the research level indian ai researchers and indian ai entrepreneurs contributing right uh, that's very interesting there shrikant uh also uh, talk to us about government adoption of ai versus private adoption of ai right we seeing uh, a much faster adoption with respect to private companies now uh, do you see uh, uh, world governments not just india but uh, what's what's the sort of scale that you also spoke about uh, delivery of citizen services using ai right uh, that is a government mandate uh, what will what will the vision by governments look like with respect to ai yeah so firstly let's look at the private private sector why is the private sector quick to adopt because there's a clear motive to increase revenues decrease costs improve the customer experience all of these things are very readily possible and if you don't do it you will fall behind so companies that use ai are going to outperform companies that don't use ai so it's very very clear that companies have a very strong incentive to improve usage of ai and therefore improve their business prospects coming to the country these things become a little less clear at that at that level but if you think about government it is a it could be the biggest user of ai because government first of all handles enormous amounts of data sets then they are targeting a 1.4 billion in, in, in india's case 1.4 billion population which means that just a decision any decision can be slightly improved it could massively increase the experience for example education what does india have as a problem we don't have enough teachers in schools and teachers are not well educated and teachers may not show up there's a teacher absenteeism problem if you bring in ai to work along with teachers in schools we can significantly improve education india in the long term needs education and entrepreneurship i believe that these are the two fundamental pillars that can take india and get us to the viksit bharat Uh, that we have been dreaming about so that education is one pillar that ai can influence dramatically but another pillar which is equally important is that as india becomes larger and gets older we need much more healthcare much better quality of healthcare and ai can significantly augment healthcare as well whether it is about creating ai radiologists so that every x ray every mri and ct scan is read properly or it is to make sure that every doctor is looking at all the symptoms and coming up with the right diagnos- diagnosis or it is about making sure that uh, healthcare outcomes in hospitals etc are much better in all of these situations you will see ai will make a big difference and india is already investing behind that as well from a government standpoint india has whole host of government hospitals and army hospitals and navy hospitals so making sure that ai is infused in each of these is also an important use case and then india has some schemes like you know direct benefit transfer and other kinds of schemes to make sure that the fraud waste and abuse in those come down to a zero again you can use ai to do that overall every company is becoming a techy company 
and every country should be a techie ca country as well, right? India should become more digitized as a country, and we have amazing accomplishments for, to, to speak about like UPI and other things. So bringing AI will make sure that India is digitally ready for Vixit Bharat. Got it. Uh, Shrikant, uh, Fractal is now 25 years old. Uh, talk to us a bit about the growth you've had. You were Fractal Analytics, now it's AI. Uh, talk to us about what the next lever of growth will be for Fractal. So Fractal has been always in the business of powering decisions using algorithms. Back in the day we used to call it analytics, now we call it AI, but there's absolutely no difference. The difference is in terms of the, the power of the tools. The tools have become much stronger, they are much more industrial, bigger tools, much bigger data sets, structured to unstructured data sets. So there are some changes in the technology, there are some changes in the environment, but essentially Fractal business has been about powering decisions in big companies, and we see an enormous prospects for that because AI is progressing so much in such a powerful general purpose technology whose costs are coming down, which means that the usage of AI across all sectors goes up. So for Fractal, the next big thing is to make sure that we capitalize on this massive AI transformation around the world and help every major company in the planet become better in the way they are addressing their needs, their customers and their revenue targets, etc. Hmm. So you are a global company. Uh, what what role does India now play as a market, not just uh, as a company you're based, out, uh, not just as a country you're based out of, but as a market? Do you see uh, what will demand, uh, what will drive demand now in India? India's spends on technology have been between between two and three percent of revenue. is is a typical Indian company spends two to three percent of revenue on technology, or maybe less than that. My sense is that India will have to spend much more on technology. Overall, we may have to up that by almost 100% um, in the next few years. And we see that becoming a big opportunity. And because ev most of these additional tech spends will go into AI, that opens up the market as, an, as uh, for everyone, including Fractal. What we think of personally is, is to bring better pro quality of products to the Indian market through using technology. So what we have done is we have launched a text-to-image model called Kaleido, which we have made it free to everyone. We've launched India's healthcare chatbot called Vedya.ai, which is doing an amazing job and getting a lot of a lot of reception. So we we are releasing more and more products into the Indian market so that we can address the India India's emerging needs in AI. Lastly, Srikant, uh, uh, a listing for Fractal has been uh, talked a lot about. Uh, what's the sort of metrics you have to gauge uh, that, okay, now Fractal is ready for the markets? Uh, it'll be a, a very unique sort of a listing for the Indian markets. There is no, compar uh, there's no comparable rival uh, that we have listed currently. Uh, where are you in that process currently? We intend to be a public company, and we have all the metrics are in the right direction for Fractal. It's just a matter of time to just get uh, paperwork done. So we intend to be a public company, and we expect to uh, to make progress on this very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Srikant, and it was lovely chatting with you. Thank you, Rishabh. Great, great to be here.